ancestors of the original people of this country. It is also acknowledging their history, their culture, their struggles. And, uh, and as uh, Indigenous peoples of Australia, we, we share a lot in terms of struggles, but we also share a lot in terms of our spiritual connection to the land. It is a relationship that uh, we value and privilege and we uh, like to acknowledge and respect the traditional owners of other lands that we visit and, and pay our respects to them. So uh, I think uh, for us, we know this is a country that is uh, uh, very complex. It is a country full of history full of peoples and culture and if you had the privilege of hearing uh, Jamua speak yesterday and also Vernon, you will notice that uh, despite being so far removed geographically, we feel the pain and we feel the hardship and we feel the oppression and uh, the racism that people feel and uh, we uh, through our acknowledgement, we pay our respects because of that and for that, and we count it a real privilege to speak on on a land so old, old like ours, but we uh, acknowledge the ancestors who've gone before as well. This afternoon, we are going to have a conversation, and uh, it's all right for you to uh, listen in on uh, this conversation that we're going to have. Uh, for uh, Indigenous people in Australia, our art and our culture is as much as alive today as it was in the past. And we are uh, so happy to see it being recognised on an international level. So the conversation will take place between this wonderful group of uh, my uh, friends, firstly, uh, my colleagues, and they come from such rich and diverse backgrounds, but together we share a passion. And uh, a passion for our culture, our people, our art, and, uh, and we're going to have a talk about that. <laughs> and you get to have a listen. So uh, please, I'd like to introduce again, uh, Jamua Marawili. Is, uh, he is a, a remarkable cultural leader in our community in Australia. He fulfills many uh, important roles for both uh, his community, but also the wider Indigenous community, and also for the Australian government. And, uh, he, and uh, he is also a remarkable artist, and uh, we've seen his artwork. So please make Jamua feel welcome. Thank you. And uh, of course we have uh, Waka Monungo, who is also a, a very important cultural leader in his community. He, uh, you would have heard him play the Yiraki yesterday, so he shares those cultural responsibilities uh, with Jamua. And, uh, and of course, he comes from this strong lineage of uh, uh, cultural ambassadors and leaders and uh, political activists. And he, he brings the strength of his ancestors and his family and his community with him as part of that conversation with us today. Please make Waka feel welcome. <laughs> And uh, I'd like to introduce Will Stubbs, who is, uh, uh, I guess, uh, how can I describe you, Will? Uh, pretty special. <laughs> he uh, has been uh, working with uh, Aboriginal people for a long, long time and is currently the director of the Bukalange Mulka Art Centre at Yirkala, which is in far northeast Arnhem Land. He is very lucky to be married to a remarkable uh, young woman who's, uh, who's a cultural leader too. And so, uh, uh, but he brings uh, 
um, information about Indigenous art from that area from a really wonderful lived experience of working closely with people. So please make Will feel welcome. So uh, we have some pictures. I think Will, shall we just go straight in yeah. to the pictures? Just where we are. Yeah, mm -hmm. let, let you know where we all come from. So what you are looking at is this wonderful map of Aboriginal Australia. You can see all the different colours. They represent all the different nations of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia. When the non-Indigenous people came to Australia very early on, they naively presumed that Australia was terra nullius, or vacant, empty country, empty of people, of culture, of civilization. But we've been working very hard to teach them <laughs> that they got it all wrong. And really, as you can see, Australia was populated by at least at least 300 indigenous nations of people. Each one had their own distinct language, their own cultural practice, and their own rich visual language. And the area that we will focus on this afternoon, of course, is far northeast Arnhem Land, and you can see that represented there. And I might now hand to Will and Jambua and Waka to talk about can we go country. To, can yes. we go back one, please? Let yeah, go to let people know where the Yomo are. Yes. Is um, okay, where the see. word Arnhem is written. This is a Dutch word. Yeah. It's a boat that visited how long, a fair while ago. Yes. And uh, Europeans named this area after the boat. Mm. It already had many more names than that. <laughs> um, that yellow section there represents the Yomo. And the next map that we're going to see is zoning in on an area within that map. Um, can we go back one more time? <laughs> Just, so in the area that's yellow, you'll see um, there's a big island there, Groot Island in the green. In the opposite, that big green island, which is not part of the Yorma country, is something called Blue Mud Bay. Yeah. And we'll be talking about this. These two men here, maybe it's a good time to tell that story. I'll ask these guys to tell you the story of Blue Mud Bay before we move to the next slide. Yeah. You are brought me one. Um, those of you should under, understand English, forgive me. But um, I'd like to say, um, tell you a bit of the history of how, um, how Bloomer Bay was started. Rumut Bay, place called Banyara, back in 1970, it was established. It was a tribal land for Jambu tribal people called Murakpa. And they taught them these Kokara, Baru. During the time, in 1970, Homeland uh, began to start. People were moving, uh, people were moving back to the promised land. And they started establishing their promised land. People were leaving all tribes. Let me tell you a little bit more that we have two moities. It's kind of um, groups of people, which is Tua and Yerika. Jambua is Yerika, I am Tua. 
will is Eureka. The reason why will is Eureka is because he married to my people. His wife is one of my tribe and our daughter Michal. Okay. When Yilpra first started to, and after a while when, when it was um, in 1998? Um, I was living there in 1998 and um, the reason I came down and stayed is because it's my mother's land and I'm the Tunga or the custodian or if you don't know it, what custodian is caretaker and for, for managing Jambos ceremony in cultural. So, anyway, I once went out and I was look, walking along the mangroves inside, inside the mangroves looking for mud crabs. I came up, I found a, a big, huge bag. It was in the mangroves. So I went over and I cleared the, the bag and torn it open and I, I found out there was a huge head of a crocodile inside it. Someone, some fishermen or crabbers might have shot it and chopped the head off and Mara is a very, very important, significant animal that owns by these people. And when I showed them, I went back home, I showed it, and I told them was an old man. He was really, really hurt. Because that is totally of the country, of Blumet Bay. And all men called Jumbo and myself. We dis discussed the matter and then we went, tried and get, um, we went through the legal side to, to protect the land and the sea. And what we did was, we went through the Northern Land Council. And we went, Northern Land Council helped us uh, going out and checking up all the bays and the creeks and the beaches. We were trying to protect the land because of the old man. Old man said, Waka, I'm going to give you a favour. And this is what you're going to do. So I started patrolling. Jumbo and myself, we started patrolling the area. All these bays in the sea and along the coast, we started. And we found that there was a lot of fishermen going to these bays, getting fish. You know, some were doing right thing, some weren't because they were in the very significant uh, piece of land that they shouldn't be allowed to, which is the sacred site. And most of these areas that we do, I mean, when we look after the land, the reason why we protect the land and the sea is because there is <coughs> sacred 
sacredness in our country and also in the sea and in the bays. So it was a long struggle, a long fight. Finally, we went to the high court. But we failed. And not far, about uh, eight years later, we fought again because we said to the high court, we want to appeal. So we 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 had a chance for to fight um, the government to to go for another five years until we got finally we got uh, sea right back. So sea right, you might have heard, or Blue Mud Bay sea right case started at Blue Mud Bay, the area where you can see on the map now. So I was the founder of the sea right. Mm. Yeah. So this is why Jamboa, he started after that, he started going around talking to other people in the other homelands, Tua and Yirika, about doing some art representing salt water, representing fresh waters, land and what is on the land sea and what is beneath the sea. Because those those waters in my, our country, in, Austria, in Arnhem Land, are Dua and Yirika. Mm. You know, there are Yirika waters, there is Dua waters. They have names. And everything in the sea and in the land is Dua and Yirika and it's owned by us, young people. Um, today, you can see us. We have come a long way, a very long way t to, to see to come up to your country and to see your beautiful country here. It is so beautiful. That's just like you come over, it is beautiful out there too. And with us we have taken our arts and most of you have seen out the arts. Those arts they talk about the land the sea and what what is on the land, what is in the sea. Talks about people as well. Us, young people, we have that art with us all the time. It's just like this is is identity for us. It is very, very strong, significant, and we can't lose it. That's why we hold it on, onto this, especially the art. It's just like a, art is like a passport to us. It's very important. Wherever we travel, we always have the art in us, in the body. We carry, we sleep with it, we work with it. Whatever we do with it, it's, we have that art always. That is to identify who we are. Now I'd like to pass it on to Jamboa to say a few words. Yeah. It's actually um, Waka uh, has found this. Uh, I think he gave the big job to me and my father and the rest of my other brothers who are already gone now. And some of our neighbors who have uh, six clan was involved. What I call clan, it is almost from a particular area. There is some a homeland now today. 
Yeah, so there is some homeland uh, today. People moved away in the 1970s. But before 1970s, we were living. To, living. We, our, we grew up where we are the largest uh, people moved away to communities, I think, in in 50s and 70s. We are the largest people moved away to to join with uh, uh, with a community where missionary has established and brought all the people on that area and moved them to a one particular place called Yirkala. There was another one called Ruid Island, and there was another one called Kalibungo, Kamilinganbi, and, and also Numbua. We ha we were ending up at Numbua on 1940s, I think. Yeah. In 19, no, in 19, in 1960s, yeah. We stayed there, we grew up there until we went to school. But one day, as I said yesterday, the, my father decided to move back to where he was there, where he was on that bay, on this empty bay, sir. In that empty bay, it's right. This country now was empty before, uh, when, uh, during the uh, 50s. But now we are come, we, we had moved away on 1972, 73 back to this community, I mean homeland. We had uh, developed our own homeland. Homeland, it's, it's really pretty hard to say homeland because what I call homeland, my own country where there, there has been laid such a beautiful patterns and designs and also the song line was there. Also there was a connection, kinship was right there. And also a very um, identity for us, sacred object was in that country. And that is one of the things that we moved away from from other families, other community, back to our own tribal country. Very important. Uh, today we at homeland now. And my homeland is okay. no, no, same place. Same place. Yeah, I cannot point it. Maybe you can point yeah. it right there. <laughs> so, yeah. if you were to, which one, Jumbo? It's somewhere there. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one, yeah. I have well we have families moved away, only just the five clan five clan group as a family. And then when we got there, now I think the population was growing up until today. Now it's almost 150 or 60, we can say. And that's what we have. Waka has his homeland somewhere there too, right in inland. And also, he, this is his mother's country. He was uh, tightly connected to support what was going on, as he mentioned that. My father was really a very strong man. His name is Wakoti Marawali. And he really pushed me into the way, uh, into the, uh, into the uh, uh, up into the air so people can see me and people can hear my voice. And that is one of the things that he really, he has really gave me a big, job to put myself into the air, into the, above the, into the sky, you could say, or above from the ground to the states that uh, uh, I became an artist. Before he, he used to call me, he used to call me, um, my name was Okoyo or Miniawan, that was my other name. 
Jambawa, he gave me, he, were, he was the first name, that is his father's name and also it was his name, but he really strengthened me to, to give me a name called Jamba. Jamba is the source of the fire where crocodile great grew head uh, uh, industry or history in that country and he, um, he, he threw the fire onto the, onto the rock where the name of the, the rock called Jambawa. Um, Bombi, Marau, uh, Bombi, Jambawa, the name of that place called Nembarki Marjala Dakalme. That is one of the very insignificant names that I am just describing, uh, just to strengthen myself because um, I far away, but I have to strengthen myself by naming all this now. It's, yeah, I think uh, he pushed me up into the air that I can go into the, into the world or into the into Australia High Court. And that was one of the things that I wanted to, I did for him. When the time came, he, uh, when at the time, came for him to die, he was also saying, Jambo, did you make a fire? Did you lead the fire? And, yes, I did. I knew what he was trying to do. You know, he was really putting me up into the state that I wanted to uh, be, be struggling and going forward to what I wanted. And, and also, my homeland was developed too. He was mentioning that I wanted to make school for our community, and also there was there is now a, a shop which is you know we have our own little shop in our country, and very important place where people really go go in and out like you know exactly what here people coming from other side going to this place and. Uh, Istanbul and then going past. And this is what's happening in my community. You know, people going from Rude Island to, to Baniela and off they go to Yerkala and whether, whether they're coming from Gaboya and going past through. One of the, this is one of the things that we has laid a foundation for our, uh, for our future, for our young generation. When our young generation get into a lot of situation in communities that have homeland. They should get out out from the from the mainstream uh, town, go back to uh, to our tribal country. As you see those patterns, there's this there's a um, pattern or you can see all those uh, um, sign or you know it is just a this is what we we had worked for the lawyers or, or even for the high court he wouldn't even understand what we were talking about some of the fresh water coming in out from a land <coughs> out into the sea and uh, getting joining with uh, salt water uh, we call it um, raping gapo to mono gapo. Sorry, I'm talking young language, but it, it is uh, like you know, fresh water coming out from the land into a salt water. And it is really, we sing, uh, we sing along on those type of. Um, connection on those patterns or, or on those mark and also those, those countries now today they have their own names not Baniel. Baniel is just a little name but the rest of all those other open areas starting from here across to Yirkala and across to Numbua they have particular different names small little names those names we always give 
some of our names to our little grandsons or uh, to our neighbors, like in a family who uh, just popping up just a little one and coming into a human being, we always give name to them so they can be a name from the, those countries, uh, and well as our English name and well as our surname. Uh, the given name, English is just a given, just a describing or giving name, but regionally we always name our children or our grandsons or a neighbor from those area. Those countries have names. Inland and also out in the sea. So the song line is there. The, the patterns and the designs are there. And significance of um, sacred substance are there too within in the, in the, in the sea and well as in inland. And that is one of the things that we really made the judge of uh, Australia couldn't understand. He wouldn't understand and he wouldn't even believe that what is, what is going on. Uh, he can believe that when um, uh, Captain Cook came or wherever the other one, who's the second one? Tell me. Uh, someone. <laughs> <laughs> and get their boat and they named it Blue Mud Bay. No, 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 wrong. That is not right. He hankered, he named it Blue Mud Bay. Whether he got the, um, the anchor, he saw maybe it was just a blue mud there, it was on, on the anchor, but no, he was wrong. The original people were living and also they had their t uh, uh, own name on those countries, on these base. One day, uh, when we got into the court and then we were, have to talk about Jalma Bay and Grandel Bay and Mayula Bay, and we thought, which one is Mayula Bay? And they mentioned that one there, Bay and Jarak Bay. Huh? And which one is Grandel Bay? That one there, where close to Baniela. Uh, which one is um, Golodong Bay? It's up that way. This is, this is in the high court, and then we said to them, no. We only know our names. That those countries have names. Those coral, uh, coral or in, the, in, the, in the sea have names. Those islands have names. Um, those uh, bays have names. They have patterns and design. And you know, the judge or the court said, how do you know? You know? Well, we know we've been here before. Our people were here before. How do you how do you feel that you know everything? Yeah. We have to well, when we was going into the court and well as we were doing a hard to same time, representing all those bay and putting it on the storing on the on the Bukulang Art Center, after court they used to come and you know, when it, when they heard Blue Mud Bay or, or not Grandel Bay or Mayula Bay or Jalma Bay, they came and bought some art from the art center. Your time? That was on your time or your, your on Andrew Blake? Yeah, yeah. Oh. You, mm. Well, then the. Can uh, we fast forward to the end where there's some. We're talking about salt water. There's pictures mm. here of the court proceedings. Go all the way to the end. Yeah. Spoil the surprise. Oh. But um, go to showing. Here we go. The court at Yilpra. The session was set down for four weeks for the lawyers to cross-examine these guys and to prove that they didn't own the land or the sea, prove that they were making it all up. They had the Council for the Fisheries, the Council for the Territory, the Council for the Federal Government. All of the big interests were there to try and cut these blokes down. And the hearing was set down for four weeks. And after two days, they just went, OK, we give up. There's no point to the argument to decide that these people haven't got the legal 
ownership of every single estate under their own law. It would be wasting everybody's time to try and break this down. You've got a few more there just to show you the atmosphere. Oh, maybe back here. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I'll leave it. Um, sorry, just go back to the police. Sorry, Francesca. Um, no. Okay. So We're going Hanson, now. Ron Levy. Buckley. Ron Levy there. Um, Gowdy. Gowdy. Lawyer. Gowdy. No. No, no. You've, no, you're right. There. Oh, there. This is... This one? No, no, no. Back. Where we where's mm. the flag and the so old just where the airport started? Yeah. There, there. Is it that yeah. one? It's Tukal Wirpanda, a young Jambu Amarawili, Tungula Munungur, and Gaurin Gumana AO. And this is Ron Levy, lawyer for the NLC, and this is the judge whose name I've forgotten. Yeah. Mm. I was going to ask Jambu, <coughs> I mean, one of the things about travelling. You do find things out, you know, and things that you should have known a long time ago when you're all together on a plane for 70 hours. <laughs> and I've heard a lot of stories just, you know, that even though we've known each other for 25 years, mm. and told me the story about your father. Mm. We were still in Gove Airport about, no, I mean, really, I really, yeah. Oh, in early, you're talking about yeah. early 70s. Yeah, because you mentioned your no, father no, no, before. No, no, early 60s. You mentioned your father before, and this is a kind of story that to me sort of shows, yeah. tries to explain what actually happened in a lot of parts of Australia. But John was an know? eyewitness to this story. Yeah, um, when he had this, he lost his family. We, we, were, we were living on this area, he lost... He had three families, four families, and then some of the families got, got uh, they all died, and, I, and, and the, the mother died. And yes, yeah, so my father, he was hit by himself. With my, my mother, she was only very little, very young, you know. But then they were living together, they were living on the area, and he, my really father wanted to really put himself into the death. He walked right into the uh, into a sacred sites area where uh, he wanted to kill himself. He walked in and said, "He told my mother, you have to go now. I gotta go kill myself by uh, because he's lost his family." From leprosy? Yeah, leprosy. Uh, and lost his families and the first family, the wives, uh, they're all gone. But he was only one, the, he was still alive, but he, he cannot see. He threw himself onto the, onto the river where a lot of crocodiles there. There is a lot of crocodile on that place there. Uh, crocodile created the place, you know. He just threw himself onto the, onto the river. And he was sinking down, you know. He went right down where to the to the uh, to the ground, and he grabbed the sand that he wanted to really kill himself. And my mother was looking at this, and I'm for two hours, what time he will be coming back, you know. But you know, the, he was looking at the pub bubbles, you know, you know the breathing. Uh, so she started to cry. And then all of a sudden, the old fellow came back from from the from the sand where probably he was on the ground holding the sand uh, inside in the in the river where a lot of crocodiles were there, all swimming along or even there maybe. But anyway, that crocodile is one of our totem, but he was there. Um, he came out, you know, he had to get a really long stick to bring him back to the shore. So she threw some um, hooks or whatever, not really hooks, but you know, um, the stick that bent like, you know, or kiss or whatever, just dragged him along and, you know, onto the shore and went down and got called somebody, other families, they were all sick too. And they all ran there and they wanted to really grab my father back into a life. They threw him, 
sideways. Here comes the old fellow for two hours inside and then coming back again uh, alive. Uh, that's the mystery of that place. Um, that w th this was at uh, Golodong uh, River, Paikurji. Um, everybody really getting tired now. Yeah, okay, okay. Bolo, I poko lo pa kono river kana. Yeah. And when we were dragged away to uh, other communities, other um, other community called Nongoboyo people. Uh, have anybody know about Rose River or Numbuwa? No one's know, but anyway, it is more further from Blue Mud Bay down south. Um, I have a, I have a Blue Mud Bay too. Um, when he got very strong, he can see, and you know, he was walking, got no family, but I wasn't on that time with, her, with him. But my mother was. When I grew up, he was telling me the story all along. Uh, even my mother. Uh, when we were moved away to number one, on that place, you know, um, there was a lot of other, other clan group. Uh, my father was just a um, visitor, but he wanted to live with those family. Um, he wanted to have a um, uh, cleansing ceremony, like, you know, he was, he was really singing um, on the first morning to, from the first night to a next day, so he can have this cleansing ceremony. And here comes a missionary, you know, with a tailor lamb and saying, Joe, what are you doing? You know, putting a tailor lamb. Jumbo, what are you doing? What do you want to do? You, know, you um, you are really dist uh, disturbing all the missionaries and all the children. Tomorrow you won't be getting raised. Okay, the next day, my father wanted to go and, you know, he didn't know what, he, what the English was you know, happening, you know, what, what, what the missionary was saying. But he, anyway, he got his bucket and, you know, he walked on the line and he wanted to really, he wanted to get food too anyway. Uh, raisin. On those days, some days they have raisins, free gift, like tobacco, flour, whatever. Anyway, he walked close to that missionary and he said, you're not getting raisin because you, you uh, didn't listen to me what I was saying yet. Uh, what I was saying to stop you, you, know, you were interrupting all the children. Okay. Fair enough. He gave the bucket to uh, bucket no, no, to the missionary. Fair enough. I I I I understand what you're saying. You know. He went and you know changed his mind and got his own duck, you know, and a paddle and a fishing line and a harpoon. Off he go and you know he got a lot of uh, fish and. and Made of jugong and turtle, and came back, and he he angered it by, uh, his kino. And now everybody came and saw him that he had a lot of food, fruit, fish. They all ran and, and even the missionary wanted to go and you know ask him a fish, and he said no, a pound, one pound. Now he told them you have to pay me a one pound. <laughs> that way. way. So every fish that he was selling it for one pound, the meat that he was selling it for two pound, you know, <laughs> on those days time there was a pound, you know. Well, maybe the money's still alive or it's gone now. <laughs> Nothing now. Well, anyway, sorry about that, but I just wanted to, he was asking me just the history of the, what, what my father did, you know. Um, so I think we can move. Just to, yeah, just to yeah. clarify that he was singing for he lost his wife and how many of his children from leprosy? Oh, that was Jambawa, mm. um, Jambawa, Bacha, John Wynn, and some of our sisters. Yeah. Yeah. So he's lost his wife and five children was why he was singing to cleanse himself from mm. that grief and to sing for them. 
So when he was there at that bay you know, with other community, he was almost thinking about his own country. The, the sand sculpture, well, if you go to Blue Mud Bay, you will see the sand sculpture still alive. On those days, time where we were, my father was moving on that area. Um, yeah, the water holes are still there. The songs and the name are still there. Yeah. And the patterns and designs are there. Oh, anyway, one, of the, one of the patterns has reached, um, what is this place named now? Istanbul. Istanbul, Bin Ali. The, all those patterns are here from some of the, one, of, one of the old fellows, uh, Walker's father, and all the, there's another clan group who will be here soon. We must look at it. Hey, no. um, Deco. Mm. Hello. Yeah. Hey. Crayon drawing, won't go. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Um, that painting you, you see now, what is up on the screen, is from my old man, and his name is Ungo. Ungo, he was a great man, a great leader. Strong man. His father. And he's my father. His father. I'm the youngest of the family. Was his family. Yeah. And everyone else is, all my elder sisters and brothers, they're gone. I'm the only one left. And, um, Anyway, um, this is one of the reasons I'm here for, is for just to represent his painting and also to represent uh, his um, message sticks. I want to tell you a little bit about um, he, the message stick. Why he made that? There was, in the early days, before First World War, Second. before Second World War, we had a lot of um, Asian people and Japanese people. They all ended up there for to get three paints. And that is why they were they were at uh, and some of these some of them were anchored in the areas where the people were already living. And anyway, when the Japanese when the Japanese anchored their boat in in the land where my dad, my father, and his people, his elder sons were living. My father said, because it was during, uh, after the Second World War, and, you know, Aboriginal people and Japanese and white people, um, during that time, there was no communications. You know, it's pretty hard. But there was one man. His his, his name was uh, Donald Thompson. He was the, the first anthropology, and he was also um, was he a government? Fred. Yeah, World Peace Mission. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, he came around that area and he ended up anchoring his boat in a place called Karapra, which is just 
Guindal Bay. Um, mm. Yeah, in Guindal Bay. Uh, just in that map that you saw earlier on. And he met up with the Yolngu people, Aboriginal people. I don't know how they, you know. Um, anyway, they helped him get his boat onto the shore and helped him walk. He, he made him, the Aboriginal people made him walk all, all the way to meet the other members in the other community, Mat other homeland. Matarait. Called Matarait. Still at Matarait. And all these people, while they were at Matarait, this man, Thompson, Donald Thompson, he came while the people was having ceremony, men's ceremonies. And that's where he met up with my father, Ungo. He met him. And believe me or not, I, he, he lived there with Yolngu people, as Aboriginal people, and he survived. I don't know how. Because the native people, uh, Yolngu people might have, you know, um, he had food. He didn't, he, he didn't had much food with him, but he, he had food from Yolngu people. He ate kangaroos, wallabies, emu, native foods. He lived with native foods. And I don't know how they communicated each other, you know? Because Yolngu people didn't understand English. And he didn't understand Yolngu, our language. Maybe they used sign languages. I don't know. And then, after that, he made him. Uh, my fa he walked with my father and my brothers all the way to another place called Caledon Bay. In English, your own name is Papula. And that's where this Japanese. They found out that Japanese boat was anchored there. And the Japanese were out there for looking for tree pang. And I thought my father didn't like that, you know. So he sent his his elder sons to get out, get out, go in the dugout canoe, pedal, 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 to the boat while it was getting dark. I mean, mid, it was midnight while the crews was asleep in the boat. <coughs> and they killed them all. My brothers killed them all, disputed them. They used weapons. And after a while, when Donald Thompson heard about that, that these people were killed, he went back to Darwin. And the High Court in Darwin, they heard about that, told everything that from Donald Thompson, and the High Court sent him back, come looking for my brothers and for my dad. So Donald Thompson came back. It was maybe a month, a year later. Mark. Don't worry. Mark. Yeah. Let us stick. And Let us stick. he didn't rest with my brothers. He put him aboard onto his boat and took him to Darwin. And once they got to the Darwin um, wharf, the policemen were already there. And they locked them up. The police locked them up. And took them to the jail. And kept them for about eight months. When it should have, should have been more than that. The sentence for my brothers were more than that. So anyway, my father, when he was sitting at, living at Caledon Bay, he was 
he was worried because he knew that what something might have happened to them. But he didn't know that they were in prison. But once later on he heard that his sons were in the prison, so he made, made that, he made a letter stick. That is why he made that letter stick. To free and them out. <laughs> to free them out. And he gave that letter stick to the same person, Donald Thompson, to take it to the High Court in Darwin. And the High Court, I don't know how, understood. They understood the judge, the High Court, the magistrate during that time, he recognised that letter stick. And then he released his sons and they went back home. That's because of the letter stick. It was a message. In 1935. In 1935, mm. yeah. And his sons went back home, safe. I just wanted to, we got a look over, huh? Press, yeah. Which one? You can see there's another clan group too. This one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that is other clan group. Um, that is one of the, um, a leader of Madarpa clan too. And he was a great artist and he had a very strong, a uh, very strong person. He, that is what my father's brother, uh, his name is Modungur, but my father's name is Wakote. Um, and that this is his, one of his eldest brother. Yeah. So he's an artist too, and he was a very, a uh, very strong person that he 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 had sand sculpture. He uh, he had taught how to paint. He knew all those names of this country, and, and, and handed over to my father when they were both together. He he had um, a, such a lot of families too. Uh, same same with like Wongo. They the both brother. They are. These families now, they are, you can call them um, in our way back there. Um, um, Yuta Indi. Yuta Indi means child and a mother. And when you saw those, uh, those blue mud bay patterns or the sign of those, com the sea coming in, or when, when, I mean, sorry, the fresh water coming into the sea. Yeah, they are connected, and that's why we always has been married before uh, back in our communities. And you two are indeed married together. M married, you know, from not my clan. I have to marry Doa from other clan group. So they were really close, connected, and they were really a fair. Uh, both uh, got together very well. They were these two. The, his modern world uh, also won't go on. This is the history of we are now here today. I'm Marapa from this, his this side family. That is Wongo's son. He is the largest family. Don't forget, we're talking about your Tua and Yerika. Yeah. Have that in mind always. Don't forget mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very young on that time. We were about young for this one. I think I was 
and the alcohola too, sometimes, when, when they were doing this. Um, I think very important thing there. Well, you know, the other message that you should go and see on the gallery there, but I want to just make it sure that I think everybody wants to go to sleep and when you, I can see some people are really getting tired. I think one of the things they claim uh, to, to bring their land back, that was on the Yerkala area, which is now, uh, third and clan was there. Yeah. Third and clan got together and they were living together, and I think those patterns, some of the patterns are representing, like, you know, you can see all those animals. We're tightly connected to those ones. We sing and we do dance about those ones. Uh, and that's why they were, they were all claiming themselves by through the animals. And then, like, you know, a country, an uh, animal, and some of our animals are really tightly connected. We represent ourselves by, by uh, all the animals that we live in, very, uh, in, in our country. Significant <coughs> ceremony, and they are representing, representing the, on that country, like in our crocodile, or this animal, who aren't good, uh, I don't know what you call aren't good now. Bandicoot. Bandicoot, Bandicoot there. It is representing one of the, Land group, you know. Uh, yeah, animals. All those ones. That's why they were representing themselves. Um, the clan group. And then this is one of the partitions they gave before. Yeah. Uh, if you are to uh, um, know more, it is almost in that gallery. There a lot of people are involved, even my grandmother. My my father's mother name I found it. Uh, I found oh. yesterday that she she was signed to here on those days time in nineteen sixty three fifty sixty three sixty three fifty three yeah fifty three sixties sixties mm. yeah. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, that, that was another one, is it? The same one? That's in there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was another one, too. And then this. should go to. Which one? I feel any. Baranga Stack. Baranga Stack. Talk about Baranga Stack. Baranga Stack. Yeah, I've seen it somewhere there. Yeah. There. Yeah, there. The first, uh, who, who was the government? Bob, Bob Hope. Bob, 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 Bob. Hope. I, and I was working with Northern and Capital. I was very young, uh, and very young, and, and I was really involved on Northern and Capital. That's why I got into more detail and got into more politics. Um, some of our measures were given from our government people. Uh, on, on Bob Hook time, one of the messages that I really didn't, I had really destroyed his 10 point um, um, a message that you know, he gave to us to Hanum Land for everybody. All, uh, and I did that one. I didn't like the message from them. Uh, when I was very young, I started to get into uh, politics. Uh, I burned his ten point at uh, Timber Creek. We had a ceremony, and I just didn't like it. I started to start to stand up and do something. I burned it. But after that, for another f uh, another five, another t ten years. Then I thought I wanted to really get into get into the soul or get into the techniques of those government people. I be I wanted to really involved, and one of my painting was just right at where the crocodile's in the, on the side of the crocodile. This one? Yeah, that's the one. That is my painting. That's how I started to 
get into more detail to become uh, 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 <coughs> um, to become more uh, influencers and I'm uh, troublemaker, you know. <laughs> I get into the tr <laughs> that's where I started from, and that is what I was paint. I was the painter. I was the artist. Uh, that you can see my art is right there. I was representing that this um, partition was given to Paul Walk. Oh, and I, I was one of them guy who was painter. No, I was painting this. Oh. And also Galarway, and also, who's this other one? Yeah, yeah. there's two many yeah. people passed. I know it's, there's a story beyond. My name wasn't Jambawa. My name was Minyawin, Terry Minyawin Marawa. Anyway. Mm. Okay. I don't know how we're going for time if people got things, but it would be good if you have a chance to just talk people through the the painting. Which country? This one? Mm. Yeah. One of the painting, I don't know, if you painted this outside. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, you do. See this? One of the painting it's coming towards uh, coming to join with um, Istanbul. Istanbul, you can see where I'm pointing now. This is the place where uh, the land have um, bay. And you can see all the patterns coming th from that area to join with this particular um, um, pattern or paintings. It is almost this the thing that we're singing, uh, where we're dancing, we're representing, we're celebrating about the sea rights. When we got the sea right back, you can see we're dancing with those, um, with a sand, uh, with a piece of um, leaves. Yeah. All painted. All painted, and it's really representing the place where the where the where the point where the arrow I was pointing. The, the painting. Yeah, yeah. This painting. This area. And that is what they're dancing now. They're just, we're not just only painting it, but almost we are telling in, uh, telling the story to about dancing with the leaves. And, yeah, dancing with the leaves. And also we are singing and singing too. So the pattern is there. And the song is a lay on, on above. And the songs I lay on the map, and the actions like dancing, you know, it's on the uh, lace on the top. That's uh, the patterns and designs, and also the land. Any more? And that is what we're doing now. We're just representing. We want to celebrate uh, our right. our rights. Mr. Yunupung was saying that in the, there is the, the land is in our hands, and even I can say the land is in our particular land for particular clan group. He's telling us the stories about patterns. He's telling us the story about singing. He's telling about uh, the dancing, and it's almost telling us that we know the name of that place, and it's all lay 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 on. You know, like you know, there's a there's some land, there's a patterns, yeah, the stories, yeah, the songs. Yeah, the dance, they all combine onto um, 
to our country. Just want to say about uh, Jake Fennell. No, Jake yeah. Fennell. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> no, no, more. No, back. Just uh, church panel. Church panel. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Go, go, go. Uh, yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will talk. We have a Yerecha clan group. I think because this is my time. I was at Yerkala. Where? Yeah, I can't see this one. Wrong, wrong. Two yeah. Two yeah. 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 yeah, this painting was all together. Yeah. I've seen those people working, you know. Uh, they got together very well. Here they they wanted to really give this patterns and design and their soul to a church. Because when we got that message from those missionaries, they were saying, you must turn around from your sin and, and give your life to our, our creator. This is the first all people did. They got together and made these patterns so they can give it to the church, uh, to the holy um, place. That is one of the things that I, when I my t it was my time, and also there were really different clan group uh, all joining together. Some of them, they do it did for their rights for Doa people, and also where we wasn't there, our caretaker. Uh, Jung, uh, Kiyotakum, custodians were doing our arts because we wasn't there. My father didn't there, but I was there. Um, we all got together, a clan group. Uh, certain clan groups here, mm. certain, certain clan groups, and it's all up there. Do you want? Just want to add extra. As you can see, that represents all the different clan groups in of Dua Moiti, of Dua, my people tribe. You know, all the different tribes. Every every box in the thing you see, it represents every one of them, every people in Doha. And uh, there's layers of information in that. It's not easy. There's layers and layers. Every particular area that you see in the, there's a little square boxes in there. There's a lot of stories, and it's pretty hard. Us Yolmo, when we see it, we look at it just like reading in the book. When we see art, we, we read, read it just like reading in the book. You know? That's how Yolmo can tell. Yeah. That is why we know the more information than any other people about our art. The next art that you'll see is rep represents the uh, Irika clan group. I know those paintings who, who are belonging. Some of the, one of them are my mother's painting, mother clan group, other ones it's a neighbor. Uh, from the clan group there, we call it, we always wanted to call it our, uh, our young way, Mari Kotara, uh, Waku, um, 
we always named it. We have skinship through the land, we have skinship through the um, human being, and we have kinship through the patterns and design. Anyway, the same, it's almost going to Jericho patterns. Uh, it's almost telling the same stories. Um, Jericho. Jericho have uh, lay, lay on uh, uh, almost a skinship and a relationship along until to his own uh, clan group. Uh. So, Mari Kutara, Yote Yende, grand, grandchild, grandmother, mother, mother's fainting, uh, and uh, Yote, child, uh, Yende, the mother. They're gonna, they're both together. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Erika. You can put the... Yeah. Together now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're together. I'm uh, sorry about uh, my mistake. All this paintings here represent Yerika people. And that's... Yeah, and that Yerika painting, talking about Yerika... Godona. Yeah. That is your clan group. And this is... Clan group? Yeah, tribe. This is Doa. This is my tribe, my people. Yeah. I'm um, Doa, but we have different clan groups. Yeah. You know, there is Doa, I mean, there's Yapo, there is Jamarpungu, uh, Rirajingu, um, etc., etc., until 13. Uh, you know. For the and other one? And the same again, you know. For the other one, Yiricha one, it's almost the same yeah. way, same like his way. Like, you know, here's um, Mangalili, Madarpa, Darwangu, Monyoko, um, Waramri, Wanguri. Um, is this co-authored by many people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. clan group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many one clan group, many, but, uh, many clans. Uh, different clan group patterns, like, and you know. So, for example, there, are, if, you, if you see crocodile there, one of my um, Jungai did, and uh, Waka's eldest brother, we wasn't here. Uh, we wasn't there at Yerkala on that time, but we were at Numbua, as I mentioned before. But uh, one of our custodians, he did for us because he wanted to to uh, bring our names onto this panel. Uh, the, really, the back, back, uh, backyard story, on those days time, missionary said to us, not to these people, uh, you should turn away from your sin and, and, come, <laughs> uh, and come to, to the light. Worship God. Uh, uh, and that was the message. So every clan group this, did this to give the, uh, the art to the church panel. Not only in Irkala, but all, almost at Galloway and another community, even number one, two, they did the same way. Too. So some of them lost their culture because no, bit of culture because they gave it away uh, to the to the to the church, and as I remember, I told you first. I did. I told you that first time when he, my father was singing, and the missionary came with the tiller lamb and said, "You need to stop singing now. Tomorrow, you should be really going to sleep now." You. Interrupting our children and interrupting our people, you know, on my father's time. On the same time, they did this one too. Mm. Yeah, just to uh, um, make it more clear that you've seen those arts representing Dua, Dua people, Yirika, Yirika people. That is how human people are. That's how we live. It's, 
it, uh, it has been existed for many thousands of years, you know, and we live by the law. Yeah. Human people live by the law. We don't break the law. And that is the two, two different people that you... Two moities. Uh, two moities that I was talking about. The Dua, the Erika, it's like a Yutu Yindi, mother and child. And that is how we get married to each other. Opposite. It has to be opposite. I can't marry a woman from my tribe now. I get punished for that. And I can't break it. It's really, really strong. This is why Erika and Dua, that is how we get married. And it has to be for other side, you know, like I get, I get woman from Yerika, so the kids is Dua. It has to, it has to be on the father's side. Same thing for Yerika. Yerika marries a Dua woman, the kids are Yerika, and it, and it goes on, you know. I'm going to thank uh, Jambo and Waka um, for saying things that won't ever have been said anywhere before, probably in a public setting. And it's in that context that we want to thank uh, Carolyn, the craftsperson of the biennial, for getting us here, uh, but not just that, for bringing objects that haven't been seen before in public together. Well, certainly, forget about bringing them together, just to show these things for the first time, give a context where, for example, the message sticks are for, seen for the first time outside Yirrkala, which are probably a peace treaty for Australia unrecognised still. And that's a, a long discussion that we won't have today. The burnt crayon drawings, some of the ones exhibited here have never been seen in public before, since their creation in 1947. So in 1935, message sticks never seen before. 1947, crayon drawings never seen before. The 1963 thumb print petition, never been seen before since it was uh, put into the parliamentary archives. And of course, Jumbo's painting here is exhibited for the first time. That's about half an hour old <laughs> from 2015. But these are things that you'll never see anywhere else, let alone seeing together. And it's very, I guess, in a way, surprising that you're seeing it in Istanbul, but I just want to record the fact that this is history. It might not be important history for anyone else, but it's very important history for Yolngu people. Mm. And I believe that it should be recognised as important history for Australian people. <coughs> and I believe that the things you've heard today also have a philosophy, a cosmology, a humanity that is also a worthy voice for anyone on the planet to listen mm. to. So we do appreciate the opportunity to, to express that. Thank you. By closing, I'm going to go down. By closing now, we might close, or you're going to give us an answer, question yeah. also. Or if you feel tired now, let's celebrate now. Now, closing. <laughs> We can do better than that. Oh, hell yeah. Now I'm going to go. No. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 